welcome to the Synopsys Optical Solutions Group training series. In this video, we will show how to use receiver filters and region analysis to perform stray light analysis in light tools. The system in this example is a 5 inch Maxutov Cassegrain telescope with a 0.5 degree field of view and a 1500 millimeter focal length. If you are unfamiliar with this telescope configuration, light enters the telescope through a compensator lens reflects off the primary mirror, then off the secondary mirror, which is just a mirrored section of the compensator lens's inside surface. Finally, a lens cleans up the image before the image plane. In this example, all the lens and mirror surfaces in the image path use a Harvey Shack optical property, as we assume that the surfaces have been polished to a 1 nanometer RMS roughness. In all cases, a specular and scattered ray is created at every intersection, and the lens surfaces split rays into both the transmitted and reflected directions. Every other surface in the model is an absorber. There are three collimated light sources in the model, one on axis, one at half of the full field of view, and one at the full field of view. Since we are interested in the light that gets to the image plane, there is a dummy plane receiver at that location upon which we will examine the irradiance distribution. The illuminance mesh resolution is approximately 0.1 mm by 0.1 mm, and all mesh smoothing and data averaging options are disabled. It's important to define both region analysis and any receiver filters prior to running the simulation as adding either of these to the model invalidates the current simulation results. We will use several receiver filters in this example. Filters can be added to a receiver by selecting the receiver, then choosing Receiver Filters, Add Filter from the context menu. The source filter requires an initial source choice, so we choose the on-axis source. The remaining filters are count filters. They allow us to choose which rays contribute to the receiver results depending on the number of times a particular type of intersection occurs. We are going to add four of the count filters and disable them at the onset. Region analysis is also not enabled by default. To enable region analysis for the desired receiver, open the simulation input dialog box from the ray trace menu, then enable collect region analysis data on the data collection tab. Now, if we run a forward simulation with 3 million rays, we can analyze the results. On lens surfaces, Light Tools is creating four outgoing rays for every incoming ray, and for the mirror surfaces, there are two rays out for every one ray in. As a result, this simulation requires a long time. Let's skip ahead. Now that the simulation is complete, we can hide the NS rays and start looking at the results. First, let's open the Illuminance Loom Viewer chart for the image plane receiver. It's difficult to see, but there's a red dot in the center of the chart for the image spot. To see it better, we can enable the slices through the chart. Also, we need to see more detail about the stray light, which thankfully is several orders of magnitude lower in irradiance than the image spot. To see these low irradiance effects, we change the value axis to use a logarithmic scale instead of the standard linear scaling. Now we can clearly see the irradiance due to the scattering and ghosting.
Let's change the filter configuration to identify the types of stray light in this system. By enabling the scatter count filter and setting the condition equal to zero, we can see the light distribution that has no scatter. This distribution only gets the contribution of the image path and ghost paths. The peak irradiance, which is the spot, is about 45 watts per millimeter squared. The region with the next highest irradiance is plateaued at about 50 microwatts per millimeter squared, or six orders of magnitude below the image. If we set the scatter count filter to be not equal to zero, the distribution shown is only due to scatter. The peak irradiance due to scatter is about the same as the ghost irradiance. Going back to the non-scattering distribution, we can switch the source filter to look at the half field of view source and use region analysis to visualize the paths that different ghosts follow through the system. Now we can see specific ghost images in the chart. If we draw a region in the strongest ghost, we can see the path that light takes to make it. Looking in the 3D view, we can see that the ghost with the highest irradiance is due to a single set of reflections within the lens of the system. The ghost with the next highest irradiance reflects twice within the compensator before going directly to the lens and onto the image plane. We can also use the other filters to help isolate paths. In this system, the image path has six specular intersections. Two refractions through the compensator, one reflection off the primary, one reflection off the secondary, and two refractions through the lens. The refract count and reflect only count filters can be used to define this case exactly. However, with this filter configuration, the ghost from the compensator is still visible. To truly isolate the image path, a surface filter would need to be used to consider only light that hits the primary mirror. In this training video, we have demonstrated how to use receiver filters and region analysis to perform stray light analysis in light tools. If you have any questions or need technical support, please contact us at lighttools underscore support at synopsis.com. Thank you for watching.